Don't worry, I'm here. I know we've not seen each other for a while, but I don't look much different. How you doing everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my house. Um, where have I been? Uh, firstly, I went away and competed in the Sea Angling Classic down in Portsmouth with my good friend Scott Rennie. We know Scotty from Norway, Scottish International. Stuart Jones, we know Stu. Welsh International. And Dave Wilson, uh, ex-lifeboat, skipper, all-round great guy. And we competed on Extreme 745. Now that name can bring horrors to many of Angler. Jokes aside, we came third. Oh, there we go. That's new, by the way. Won a few trophies recently. Third in the Sea Angling Classic. We've done a lot better than third, but we messed up. Uh, uh, the rules are crazy. I get it, it's a lot of money at stake. 120 grand, 130 grand. Uh, we messed up. I caught a tote, 41 pound, 151 centimetres. We messed up measuring it when we sent it in. They voided it. That meant we were second at that point. And the day before, the first day of the competition, we came in an hour early uh, because we didn't read the rules properly. And we missed out on a bring. We had two bring. You can catch three of every species. We only had two. If we caught another bream, when we had two in a row and had to go, we were on the bream mark. If we caught one more bream and we had an hour, we would have actually won the whole comp if we didn't mess up. That's not taking anything away from the winners. We messed up and that's what it's all about. It's not just about fishing that competition. So well done to Jace and Liam for winning. Top lads from the Isle of Wight, local area. Um, they had the same issue as us last year. I think they had over 10 fish taken off them. So it's a learning curve. Next year we'll be back, bigger and stronger. Bad boys come second and we came third due to our um, mistakes and it really hurt actually. Uh, but yeah, that's enough of that. That was the first week. The second week I went to Glastonbury Festival. That's why I've got a strange suntan. Um, well, I don't know why it's strange. Well, I've got my panda eyes. I've got my 1940s glasses on. So if I fucking shoot at, um, just because my eyes are sore, because I get hay fever and I get migraines and I like to wear glasses and I need to for uh, for reading and rig making. So here we are. Glastonbury was brilliant. Had lots of fun. Seen lots of you who watch my channel just coming up to me at two, three in the morning. Hey. I love watching your videos, so thanks for that. I love it. If you see me out on the beach and you see me at a festival or you see me in your local shop, come and say hello. Remember, I am just like you, but I just take a camera with me. And if there's more people like me, I believe the fishing world will be a better place. But there's some superstars. We know all about them and that's how they behave. Right, back to this lesson or um, rig making exercise. I get asked quite a lot, uh, can you show us a few rigs? As you know by now, I do things very simple. Yes, when I'm fishing matches, I change it up and mix it up, but my videos are for everyone, all right? I don't believe in reinventing the wheel. The best rig for me in the world is a running leisure. I'm not gonna show you how to make one of them. What I'm gonna do is show you how to make the pulley that I use in all my videos, the one that I catch all my cod and smooth hangs on. So, I'm not gonna go into it here is a swivel. I'm gonna make it, you can pause it at home. Um, yeah, all right, so I get asked this quite a lot. How the hell or why the hell do you use um, 150 pound rig body, 100 this, because I can. What I've got here today for this exercise is 0 0.70, 60 pound. So I can cast, this is breaking strain. Remember your rig takes all the impact of the cast. If you are using a 90 pound shock leader and using nine ounce leads, remember your rig body has to be the same. For this exercise, I'm using four and five ounce leads. So I'm gonna be using 60 pound. This is how I do it. I don't measure it up really. Um, for smooth eyes and cod, I'm just gonna knock it up. 
Normally it'd be five foot, it could be four foot, but I'm gonna make this rig, you know, so it works, but I'm not gonna measure it to the exact, that's up to you how you do it. Right, so I cut my rig body. This is Tronics Pro shock leader, just for the exercise. 0 0.70, weighted at 60 pounds. I then, must just get this in then. But anyway, sorry I've not put a video up for two weeks. As I've said in my post, if you've seen that, I'm not a pro, all right? This is a hobby for me, I enjoy it. I actually um, love doing videos for you guys, so it's more than a hobby. But, you know, it's not my main job. So what I'm gonna do now is attach a swivel. Like I said, everything's basic. These are Tronics Pro swivels. Simple knot, you do it your way. Remember, if you're watching this and you think, I'm better at making rigs than you, Wayne. Good on ya. But they work for me. So I go up five times, back down five times, use my teeth. I've got my rig puller. Like I said, I've not got a second camera lined up. I'm not doing all this to show you. I'm just running through it. All right. There you go. Simple. Nip that off. I then get some beads. One bead. I might invite my dog in in a minute. I've got two. One of them looks like um, she's been set on fire and put out with a cricket bat, okay? So she's a beautiful little thing, as you can imagine. She's just sat out there. She's got the brains of an earwig and she's called a Puggle. That's not her name, that's her breed. She is a pug crossed with a beagle. They are absolutely useless. I won't recommend them. Right. I'm just going on a little bit. Right, so there you go. Swivel, bead, pulley bead, swivel, just like my videos. Done, I get a clip, like so. That goes onto your lead. I haven't actually got one. I'll get one in a minute. But yeah, we've got loads planned. All right, smashing out the videos for you. We've got, honestly, so much stuff planned. So same as before, up four times, Back down free, back free. However you do your knot, if it works, continue to do it. I'm just gonna nip this one off. What I'm gonna do a second, just grab a lead. I'm not very well prepped, am I? Leads, short cast leads. Cheers, Graham. I'm gonna do when I make my rigs my rig body I add a lad all right that's a normal lad obviously I won't be able to clip it down for this exercise we use a splash down talk amongst yourselves I'm here all day right so there you go there's our splash down, so you've now got your rig body. So there you go. Bead, pulley bead, bead, snap, clip, into my splash down to my lead. Right, so now, you know this by now, we have a pulley system. Right, for my hook length. Right, people ask me this as well. I'm not sure why. Oh, why do you use, this is, Point, let me have a look. Point six zero, this is 54 pound hook length. Because I do. So what I'm gonna do now is attach my hook length to my swivel. Look how easy this is to knot. People go, oh, you're using 60, 70 pound. How do you knot it? Just like that, look at that. That's called Yuki Invisible. I absolutely love it. Just like you, I buy it. Right, when you're making a pulley, all right, what you need is your hook length needs to be a little bit shorter than your rib body, naturally. So what I do is have it a little bit shorter. For this exercise, I'm rushing through it. It's not a five foot pulley. It's not where I'd have five foot, then my hook length would be just under five foot. You know how it works by now, your hook length always has to be shorter than your rig body or you won't be able to put it together, which I'll show you at the end. 
So now I've got my hook length. Right, this is the magic part of the rig for me. This is what I do that's a little bit different to a lot of people. And as you see, this is my magic tube in Fintronics Pro. I get asked this probably 10 times a week, okay? This is a luminous tube in code TPPT15 and it's 1.5 mil. All right, this is out of Tronics Pro. There's many others, but I don't think anything that I've used has been as good as this Tronics Pro tubing, in my opinion. As you see, it's my pink tubing I use in all my videos. Right, some of you may laugh at this, some of you might not. A lot of people message me, all right? And they say, how do you get your tubing round the hook without splitting it? Right, this is what you need to do. Do not put your hook on first. What I want you to do is put your tubing on. I've cut probably just over a centimetre and I push it on, like so. So I put my tube in on my hook length first. I then put my circle hook on first. Right, what you need to do is go from the front to the back. All right, this is very important. I want my tube in to run along the shank, the back of the hook, like so. A lot of people put their hooks around the wrong way, okay? I'll show you why in a minute. So that one just sits freely for now. And then I just got a Frio normal J Aberdeen hook on the bottom. Right, this is what I like to do. I fish simple, we know this, just like me. There we go. Right, as I said, you can make your rig as long, as short as you want to. Right, this is the magic bit, okay? What I've said before and what I've shown you is, if I just wrap a lot of people, you know, and some people still do it. And like I said, it's about the way I do it. It's not about the way you do it. Some people just like to do this still, wrap it around like that, all right? That's fine. What I find is, if you get a little white in on there or just moving around, suddenly you've got one wrap around the hook. A fish comes along, takes that top hook, no resistance. When you go to pick up your rod, you get a lovely bite, tie it up because you're using a circle hook, no striking, we don't really do that anymore. Suddenly the weight comes on, there's no pressure on that hook, so the hook slides at the rig, you miss the fish. When you wind it in, I'm sure you've all had it before, your bottom hook's here, your top hook's up here with no fish. This is where my tubing comes in for resistance. That hook is sharp, it's just dug in the back of my nutsack. So there you go. Not that I'm naked, you know that, but it was a good shot. Right, what I like to do now, when I'm making this rig, is put my foot on the rig body, giving me a little bit of tension for my tubing. This will become clear in a minute. What I like to do then, is do one, two turns on my circle hook like so. This is where the tension comes on. I then twist the tube in like so. This will help a lot of you out. Keep twisting that, as you can see, I've got the tension on. I push my tube in so it goes onto the hook, onto the rig body like so. And then we are absolutely laughing. Honestly, that takes a lot of pressure. If we're using different size baits, like we can be with squid and stuff, if you give it a big one, it moves just like that. And there you go, that's it. That's what my tubing does. And lots and lots of you get in contact with me since using this, and it definitely works. When you're smooth hang fishing, probably, I'm not exaggerating, 99 out of 100 smooth hounds will get taken on the circle hook. Pretty much the same as cod, unless they're really small codling and you're using blow lug. But there you go, that sits. Well, I've got that tubing on there as well. Look at my circle hook. It kicks an absolute tree and it just works. We've got resistance and what a great presentation. When I put my bait, look at that. So what I'm gonna do now is stand up and put this rig together like so. I'm just gonna, as we know, once we do this under tension, but look, I'm probably, for this exercise, like I said, I'm not really measuring it up. All I wanted to do is just show you how to do it. But that's pretty much the length that I would use. Probably three or four inches difference on the rig body to the hook length. So then all I can do 
is put it into my splashdown like so. We know how to use these by now. And there you go. For casting, you're absolutely laughing. We've got a pulley system like so. And there we are. That is the way that I target smooth hangs, cod, bass, pretty much everything I do. Um, using big baits, rays, in the Bristol Channel. If I've got a nice area where I'm fishing, I know I've got a sandy bottom and it's not rough at all. I'd like to use up and overs, but for me, that is the best rig in the UK for targeting multiple species.